Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Teacher. Hi. Hi. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. Really happy to see you one more time. Just give me one second. Sorry? I'm going to my house. Who's going home? Ah, Noemi is going home right now. Are you driving? Yes. Be careful. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're going to start and I'm going to share the screen with you now. So there it is. Okay. Ah, it's a very nice evening. Is it raining where you live? It's been raining the whole day, I hear. I'm going to um is the attendance list. When you hear your name, please let me know. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Good evening, teacher. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Alejandro. Welcome. Hi, teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hello. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Give me a second, please. Okay, um, thank you, Byron. Cesar Alexander Ramirez Ramirez. Present teacher, I'm right here. Okay. Thank you. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Present, sir. Thank you. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present teacher. Welcome. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzman. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Welcome. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Present. Welcome. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Jose Raibin Enriquez. Here, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Dayana Serón de Paz. Present. Good evening. Welcome. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Present, teacher. Welcome. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. Teacher. It's raining right now. Hello. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Welcome. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Hello. 
Welcome. It is Regina Hernández Cuellar. It is Regina Hernández Cuellar. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. José Arturo Ramírez Bernal. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andrés. Janet Yanira. Okay, then. Chat entry here. Okay. All right. Everybody, welcome. This is Advanced English 2, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service once again. Welcome. Uh, session number 10, and today is October the 10th. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's October the 10th of uh, 2023. So um, be welcome, be welcome once again. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to study the passive of present continuous, present perfect, and the future, okay? So um, as a review, because we studied this last time, you have to use passive tenses for actions where the emphasis is on the object of the action. And if you remember, the basic structure of the passive voice is the verb be plus the main verb in past participle. What changes every time is the verb be because you need to conjugate it in uh, specific verb tenses. Sometimes it's going to be present simple. If it is present simple, then you use the verb be in present form, like am, is, are. If it is past simple, then you have to use the verb being past, was, and where. If it is uh, present continuous, then you use the verb being present continuous. You say is being, are being. If it is present perfect, you use the verb being present perfect. You say have been, has been, etc. So that's the tricky part. For the rest, it is not really that complicated. Now, how do you use it? You use the passive of the present continuous for ongoing actions. Okay, actions that are happening. Okay, actions that are are, are happening these days or are happening right now. So you have an example: an increasing number of degrees are being offered online. Okay, an increasing number of degrees are being offered online. Now, if you look at this, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see the verb be, are being. This is the verb be in present continuous. Remember that present continuous is the verb be and the verb in ing. So the present continuous of the verb be is are being. After that, you have to use the main verb in past participle. An increasing number of degrees are being offered online. Now, we use the passive of the present perfect for recently completed actions. Recently completed actions that usually have some sort of impact in the present tense, okay? So more music has been downloaded this year than ever before, okay? So this is relatively recent, it happened this year, okay? And it has some impact because if you notice, it says than ever before. So basically they're comparing this to all years in the past. Right, So it's a recently completed action with some impact or relevance in the present. Now you can see it here, present perfect, passive. So that means that you need to use the verb be in present perfect. And that's right here, has been, has been. If the subject is I, you, we, or they, then you say have been. But in this case, it's music. So it's it. So you say has been. So that's the verb be in past participle. You can see here has been present perfect form. And after that, you have to use the main verb in past participle. It's a regular verb download. So you say downloaded. Okay. More music has been downloaded this year than ever before. And then you have this. You use will plus the passive or be going to plus passive for actions that will begin in the future. Okay. Examples. More computers will be infected by viruses. All right. Now you can see here they're using the passive voice with the modal auxiliary will. Modal auxiliary verbs have very specific rules. One of the rules is that you have to use af after, I mean, you use a, a, a modal auxiliary verb and the verb that comes after that has, has to be in base form. It goes in base form every time, no exceptions. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Every time you have a modal auxiliary verb, the verb that follows will go in base form, always base form. And what is the base form of the verb? Is the verb without any modifications, okay? That's the purest form of the verb. It's the base form of the verb. So 
what is the base form of the verb be? Be, okay. What's the base form of the verb work? Work. What's the base form of the verb play? Play. What's the base form of the verb break? Break, etc. So that's the base form of the verb. You can see it here. So they're using the verb be with the modal auxiliary will. So will be, just like that. And after that, they're using the main verb in past participle. And that's infected. More computers will be infected by viruses. Alternatively, to talk about the future, you can use the structure be going to plus a verb. OK, so you use be going to plus a verb in base form. It's a kind of a similar structure. So you have it here, more healthcare sites are going to be used by people from home, okay? More healthcare sites are going to be. Now, this is the be going to, be going to form of the verb be, are going to be. Depending on the subject, it can change to is going to be or am going to be, right? But in this case, more healthcare sites, they, right, are going to be. And after that, you use the main verb in past participle, used, another regular verb. So more healthcare sites are going to be used by people from home. That's pretty much the structure that we're going to be studying today. It's uh, the passive voice, okay? Always remember that when you use the passive voice, the receiver of the action, in other words, the object comes at the beginning. After that, you use the verb be, you need to conjugate the verb be, and then the main verb in past participle, and then whatever it is that you consider necessary to complete the sentence. Before we continue, do you have any questions? Anything that may not be clear? It's a good moment to ask. If you have questions, please raise your hand. If you don't have questions, don't raise your hand. Madeline, okay. What's your question, Madeline? So, uh, I have a lot of questions because I I don't understand no, 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 very no, no. very well. Okay. Okay. So, what's your first question? How to identify that? To identify what exactly? The passive present perfect. The passive. Uh, the the present perfect passive. Yes. Okay. Present perfect passive. Let's see. I'm going to show you. I believe I sent something. I think it was in this group. One of the very first messages that I sent. About the structure, right? Ah, about the structure. Yeah. I, I, I believe I sent. Ah, but I cannot show it in class. So that's a problem. <laughs> I can send it via WhatsApp, but I cannot show it in in. in on the screen because of, you know, uh, it wouldn't be fair, but okay. Um, however, what I sent you yesterday is a different story. It's right here. Let me copy this, copy image. I'm going to paste it right here. Oh, come on. Just give me a second. I'm running into some technical problems. Okay. Okay. All right, much better. Um, let me reduce the size of it. Okay, great. Okay, so this is what I shared with you last time. Okay, we have a present continuous, continuous passive. There's a present perfect passive, will plus verb, and will uh, going to plus verb. Okay, all of these are passive forms. So how do you identify the present perfect passive? Well, it's easy. Remember that uh, you. Basically, the structure of the passive voice is the main structure is you have to use the verb be plus main verb in past participle. Okay, that's the structure. So you need to conjugate the verb be. That's the first step. And uh, how are you going to conjugate it? Depends on the sentence. Okay, and often you will be transforming. Uh, active sentences into passive sentences. Let's have an example. Um, same example that we have right here. It's more music has been downloaded this year than ever before. So you say people have downloaded more music this year than ever before. Okay. 
I'm going to move this down so just to make a little bit more space for the rest of the explanation. So uh, let's take a look. This is an active sentence. People have downloaded more music this year than ever before. So how do you uh, identify the present perfect? Present perfect in active voice is here, right? Have downloaded. The, the structure of present perfect is the, I mean, the auxiliary have or has or he, she, it. And after that, the main verb in past participle. So this is present perfect. People have downloaded more music this year than ever before. So remember that when you want to say convert a, a sentence from active to passive, there are certain elements that you need to identify. The first one is the subject. Subject is here. The subject is people because it's the subject and also the agent, okay? What is the agent is the entity, okay? Or the person, the thing that does the action of the verb. So people have downloaded more music this year than ever before. Okay. Let me, okay, there you go. So the second thing we need to identify is the verb. The verb is here, that's the verb. And it's in present perfect. I'm going to, okay. There's the verb, have downloaded. This is the verb and it's in present perfect. It's very important for you to identify the verb tense. After that, you have to ask yourself a question. You need to find the object. And for that, you need to ask yourself the question, what? People have downloaded what? The answer is more music. Okay, that's the answer, more music. Always the answer to that question uh, is useful to identify the object. This is the object. And this is one of the most important things that you need to know about the passive voice. You need to know what the subject is, what the verb is, and the, the, the uh, tense also, and then the object. Now that you have all of this, okay, then you can uh, go with a passive sentence. Now, how do you do it? Well, you have to take the object from the active sentence and you put it at the beginning of the passive sentence. And then you say, more music, that's the object from the passive sentence, but now it is the subject of the, uh, sorry, it was the object of the active sentence and now it's the subject of the passive sentence. After that, what do you need to use? You need to use the verb be. But how do you use the verb be in this case? You have to use the verb be in present perfect, okay? Because it's the same verb tense that you identified in the active sentence, okay? So what is the present perfect form of the verb be? You know that you have to use have and then the main verb in past participle. In this case, the verb is the verb be. More music has been. That's a lot of when here. I think it's gonna rain very soon. So more music has been. That's the verb be, conjugated in the present perfect tense. After that, you need to use the main verb in past participle. Okay, and what is the main verb in past participle? Downloaded, it's right there, has been downloaded. And then, sorry, and then you finish the sentence. This year, than ever before. That's it. So how do you identify the present perfect passive? Well, you have the verb be in present perfect. And after that, you have a verb in past participle. That's how you identify it. And you can see it here, right? Present perfect passive is again, have been or has been plus the main verb in past participle. If it is present perfect, in, sorry, present continuous, you use am being, is being, are being, plus the past participle. If you're using will plus a verb, you say will be plus the main verb in past participle. And if it is going to plus the verb, you say am going to, is going to, or are going to, then the verb be just like that. You don't need to change anything. And then the main verb in past participle. Uh, Thank you, teachers. You're welcome. If you're clear. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I over explain things. I understand. <laughs> I, I go on and on and on, but I, I, I like it when it's clear. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have questions about uh, the structure? Any more questions? No? 
Okay, I, I'm taking that silence as a no. Well, if that's the case, then I'm going to give you a couple minutes for you to complete this exercise. We're going to do exercise B. Complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb in parentheses. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. Sometimes, okay? Especially for the future. That's what I'm talking about. So I want you to take a look, right? Thousands of computers already. Okay, now there are certain words that are very useful for you to identify the verb tense that you're going to need. The word already is a key word for present perfect. Okay, so when you see the word already, ah, you know, that's present perfect. There's like a 99% chance that the verb tense is present perfect. So you have to use the present perfect passive. Thousands of computers already, and then you have in parentheses, infect, that's a verb, have been infected by spyware. Now I'm going to give you a, a few minutes, okay? I'm going to give you um, two minutes uh, for you to complete this exercise, which by the way is knowledge check 3.4, all right? So I'm going to give you a couple minutes, complete the sentences, Remember, you, you're going to be using present continuous passive, present perfect passive, and the future with the passive. It'll be with will or be going to. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes. Please complete the exercise. After those two minutes, we're going to check answers together. Okay, let's do it.
time to check. Okay, so what do we have? Number two, if you know the answer, please raise your hand. This is section 3.4, right? Okay, if you know the answer, please, please raise your hand. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Jose Raibin, then Maritza Isabel. So number one, please. Well, I'm not two, sure sorry. if I'm I'm not sure if I'm wrong, but I think if more freeware will be released. To will be released. All kind, yeah. Okay. More freeware will be released soon for all kinds of applications. Okay. Let's see. That is correct. Totally. You can also say more freeware is going to be released soon for all kinds of applications. But since this is a prediction, will be released will be more appropriate. So it is correct. Thank you, Jose Raibin. Uh, Maritza, how about number three? What do you have? Okay. Um, thousands of love are being started on Oh, I don't know. <laughs> All sorts. Thousands of blogs are being started on all sorts of topics every day. Yeah, thousands of blogs are being started on all sorts of topics every day. True. Really good. Thank you, Maritza. That is correct. So it's present, continuous, passive. Byron and then Debbie. Number four. Okay. Nowadays, Dean chat rooms um, are being monitored. So, by... Sorry, uh, okay. that's number five. <laughs> it's number four for you. Uh, number four. Okay. Yes. Recently, more hotspots have been set up in small town. Yes, recently, more hotspots have been set up. Okay, in small towns. That is correct. The word recently is definitely a key indicator right there of the verb tense that you have to use. Very good. Thank you. Debbie Segura. Okay, number five. Okay. Nowadays, teen chat rooms are being monitored by concerned parents. Yes, nowadays teen chat rooms are being monitored by concerned parents. Okay, yeah, that is correct. Are being monitored by concerned parents. Thank you. Now you have nowadays, sounds like an ongoing action. Okay, something that is still happening. So present continuous passive. Thank you very much. Number six, who can tell me the answer to number six? Miss mm -hmm. Romero. Hey, I'm not sure about it, but I'm going to choose the present perfect. These days, podcasts have been downloaded by people of all ages. Well, let's analyze it. It says these days. So it sounds like an ongoing action. Uh, okay. So are being downloaded. Yeah. yeah that's these yeah. days, podcasts are being downloaded by people of all ages. That is correct. Thank you, Ms. Romero. Okay. All right. Good. How about number seven? Ana Filomena Mendoza. Some viruses will be created that no security so software can detect. Yeah, soon viruses will be created that no security software can detect. You can also say soon viruses are going to be created that no security software can detect. And that's nothing. Wait for AI written, you know, viruses. That's going to be horrible. Okay, when 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 artificial intelligence is pretty much uh, programmed to create viruses. I don't even want to imagine that. Okay. Uh, hey, what about number eight, Alejandro Quintanilla? Teacher, excuse me. Sure. What's What's the meaning of the second part of the sentences recently? Uh, Which one? Resuelta. 
The number seven, teacher. Number seven. Yes. Uh, soon viruses will be created that no yes. security software can detect. This part is, is that I don't understand. That no security software can detect. Que ningún software de seguridad, an antivirus, okay, can detect. Se crearán pronto, virus mm -hmm. serán creados que ningún software de seguridad podrá detectar. Uh, ah, no security software. Que digamos que el antivirus no lo va a detectar. Ajá, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, like the antivirus will not be uh, powerful enough to detect. Mm -hmm. Sounds really okay. dangerous, but okay. All right, um, what about this one, Alejandro? Would you like to participate, number eight? Mm -hmm. Yes, webcams uh, are going are going used. Are going are going being used. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. It's a bit different. It's a bit different. Uh, uh, who can help us? It's it's okay. Thank you very much. Who can help us? Raise your hand, Ana Filomena. Webcams are, are going to, to be used. Okay, webcams. Future to broadcast. Uh -huh. College classes are, are going to be used. Okay, used. webcams are going to be used or will be used. I mean, either is fine. Okay, are going to be used or will be used in the future to broadcast college classes. Uh, this book is like at least 15 years in the past, probably. Okay, this is commonplace these days. Actually, we're doing that. Only this is not college, okay? But uh, the idea is the same, okay? You're using, I'm using the webcam, you're using the webcam so you can, we can communicate in a class, okay? So, yeah. Maybe you can, we can change this to webcams are being used nowadays, okay? To broadcast college classes and pretty much all sorts of courses. It's very common now. So, uh, let's continue. Very good. Those are the answers to uh, knowledge check 3.4. So uh, if you haven't solved it, okay, here it is. Okay, I I'm, I'm showing you the answers. In case you don't have it. Okay, they're the same answers because they're the same questions. Okay, um, let us continue here. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, well, there's a section of grammar extra Okay, that we're going to cover. This is not in the material and it is not in the platform. So everybody pay close attention to it. So what do we have? Is the passive of present continuous, present perfect in the future. Now, if the agent, now what is the agent? The agent is the person or the thing doing the action. Okay, is unknown or obvious to the from the context, it is better to use a passive form. However, if the person or thing doing the action needs to be emphasized, it's better to use an active form, okay? So what is the meaning of this? Imagine this sentence, okay? I'm just, I'm gonna try to exemplify this here. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not going to use present continuous. I'm going to use past simple because it's a lot easier uh, to, to exemplify this by using past simple. Imagine that I say, look at this. Police caught, well, I can use the present perfect, okay? The police have caught the bank robbers, okay? Police have caught the bank robbers. Okay, now this is active voice, okay? That's active voice. Police have caught the bank robbers. Okay, now if you want to transform this sentence into the passive voice, what do you need? Okay, you know the formula, right? First, you identify the subject. The subject is police, okay? Now, but one thing that I want you to understand is this. Police is the subject. And it's also the agent. Why is the police the agent? Because they have caught the bank robbers. They did the action. They didn't receive the action, they did the action. They went out and they caught the bank robbers, okay? So this is why, okay, 
police is the agent. The agent, as you can see here, the person or thing doing the action. That's the police, okay? Have got the bank robbers. Now, second thing that we identify, that's the verb. This is the verb and it's in present perfect, okay? It's the second thing that we have identified. And the third thing is the object. You say, police have caught what or who in this case? The answer is the bank robbers. So the answer to that question marks the object. Now, what do you do? As we have studied before, you have to take the object from the active sentence at the beginning of the passive sentence and it becomes the new subject. And you say, the bank robbers, now, what is this? It is the subject, but it's not the agent because they didn't do anything right there. I mean, yeah, they robbed the bank, okay? But it's not the idea right here. So the bank robbers, and then you can use the present perfect passive, have been caught. Now that's the present perfect passive. Now, I have a question. In your opinion, which of the two sentences sounds better? Which one sounds more natural or more appropriate? The active sentence or the passive sentence? Police have caught the bank robbers or the bank robbers have been caught. Let's change the subject here to police officers. Okay, yeah, that sounds better, a little bit better. Okay. Uh, police officers have caught bank robbers or the bank robbers have been caught. Which one do you consider is better? Alejandro? Or Nadia? Teacher, I I don't understand uh, this example. Um, I don't... I cannot different about the subject active and subject passive. And okay. I don't understand the difference. And the difference. About... Okay. Yes. Basically, anything that comes before the verb is the subject. It doesn't matter if the sentence is active or passive. This is an active sentence. And the verb is here, and whatever comes before the sub before the verb is the subject. Police officers. This is a passive sentence. The verb is right here. But whatever comes before the verb is also the subject. But there's a difference between the subject in an active sentence and the subject in a passive sentence. In an active sentence, the subject is also the agent. In other words, the agent, and you can see it here in the explanation, is the person or the thing doing the action. Now, who have caught the bank robbers? The police officers. They did that, they did the action. They caught those robbers, okay, handcuffed them and took them to prison. Well, not to prison, okay. They detained them, they arrested them, okay. So that's that's the difference, okay. Agent, because the police officers, they did the action, they caught the bank robbers. But what happens in the passive voice? You have the bank robbers. The bank robbers didn't do anything. They didn't catch themselves, okay. The bank robbers, received the action. Somebody caught them. They didn't catch somebody, no. And a different person caught the bank robbers. In other words, they received the action. That's why the bank robbers in the passive sentence is the subject, but not the agent. Because they didn't do the action of the verb. They received the action of the verb. The bank robbers have been caught. Now, my question is, you have two sentences right here. Police officers have caught the bank robbers, active and passive. The bank robbers have been caught. Question for you, I mean, for the class. Which of the two sentences do you consider is more appropriate? Ms. Romero. I think the passive voice sounds like more formal. Okay, so, so you have chosen the passive voice because it sounds more formal. Yeah. Okay. It depends on the context you are, you better use that one. Okay, so you have chosen yeah. the passive voice. Okay, that is 
partially correct. Okay, the answer is yeah. The passive voice is the most appropriate form. However, it doesn't really have to do with level of formality. Okay, let's see what uh, Jose Rabin has to say about it. And then Nadia. Teacher, I, I think that both are appropriate, but depending on the person that talking. Uh, for example, if we are listening to the, to the news, uh, I think uh, the uh, the presenter is going to use is going to be using active voice. Active but voice. For yes, but mm -hmm. for example, if I'm talking with my friends, I'm going to use passive voice. It depends on the person who's talking. Okay. I will say it's probably the opposite. Probably the, the person presenting the news will be using the passive voice, and probably when you're talking to with your friends, you'll be using the active voice. That's the really? way I see it. The way I see it. Okay, but okay. okay. Well, well, well. Okay, let's see what Nadia has to say, and then Debbie Segura. Nadia. Thank you, teacher, for for your explication about uh, the this ex exercise. explanation. Explanation mm -hmm. uh, about this exercise, but I I have other question. Okay. Uh, and in this sec in this type uh, sentence, always we have a a two subject, uh, an active of and passive. Always um, uh, we have um, two subjects. The thing is that you have one subject in the active sentence and you have a different subject in the passive sentence. In the passive sentence, the subject is the object of the active sentence. In other words, when you identify the object of the active sentence, it becomes the subject of the passive sentence. Uh, it's not that you have two subjects, it's just that for one you have one and for the other you have a different one. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay. But again, uh, I'm asking right here, uh, which of these two would you say is the most appropriate form, the active form or the passive form? Now, Ms. Romero told us it was the passive form, to which I said she is right. Okay, but I want to know why. Why is the passive form more appropriate than the active form in this case? May I say my opinion? Who's who's speaking? Debbie. Debbie. Okay, yeah. Debbie, Debbie. Okay, Debbie. Okay, for me the passive voice is the appropriate because you you don't have to mention the police officer. Okay, you don't have to mention it. Why not? Yeah. Because it's really understandable. Uh, you can it's say obvious. the bank robbers have been cut. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it's like uh, not necessary to say the police by the police officer, right? That is because correct. Because have been cut from who? I mean, right? who, who catches criminals if not the police? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. That yeah. is the answer. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. That's the right answer. In other words, because <laughs> the agent is obvious. You can see it here. Let's take a look at the explanation. If the agent, the person or thing doing the action is unknown, that means we don't know who it is, or obvious, okay, from the context, it is better to use the passive form. Now, the two sentences, police officers have caught the bank robbers or the bank robbers have been caught. The passive voice is more appropriate because we, just like what Debbie said, okay, you don't need to mention the police officers for you to understand that it was the police that caught them, okay? If you catch criminals and you're not a police officer, then uh, you're doing something that's illegal, okay? That's vigilantism, okay? And and that's a crime, okay? If, if you're doing stuff like Batman. So uh, the thing is, the bank robbers have been caught, okay? Who did that? It was the police, of course. It was the police. Okay, so in this case, it is it is obvious. That's why the passive form is more appropriate than the active form. Alejandro. No, teacher, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, all right. So, say, yeah, yeah, so just uh, for, uh, es inapropiado, pero solo para que se sepa, un ciudadano común y corriente. Ah, okay. Sí puede, sí puede hacer un arresto, se llama arresto ciudadano. 
Okay then. But, so but I, I, okay. I take it's that right. back. It's... I take that back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So well, if that's the case, okay. Well, that, that's something I didn't know, but um, at least I, I guess what you cannot do as a citizen is like uh, apply justice by your own hand. Okay. I guess that will be illegal, right? Yes. Uh -huh. That 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 will be illegal. Okay. So yeah. Sorry about the. The wrong information. <laughs> Are no, you no, 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 no. But, but I understand. I understand the the. Um, I don't know. The idea. Um, the the idea and uh, and maybe the the culture where this idea uh, sale. So, okay, where it comes from. Yeah. Yes, where Are it you? come from? Because English speaker uh, thinks in another way mm -hmm. than us. So I, I understood that you said. Okay, all right. Are you are you a lawyer? Yes, teacher. Ah, okay, that explains it. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah, okay. we okay. notice it. All right, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Okay, cool. Um, all right then, let's take a look. So um, that's one, okay. And and the case in which it is uh, unknown. Now let's let's take a look at another one. What if I say, um, imagine, let's see, um, think of another example, but I can't come up with anything. Okay, active. I say, um, some companies are developing new communication devices, okay? Phone companies are developing new communication devices. That will be active. What about the passive form? You can say new communication devices are being developed. Okay, now you have this active and passive phone companies are developing new well let's for example change phone companies let's let's uh go for say AT and T right okay that's a phone company so AT and T is developing new communication devices and then you say new communication devices are being developed in this case which sentence do you think is more appropriate the sentence in active form or the sentence in passive form what do you think Jose Raibin. After what you told us uh, before, now I think the second one, the second option, passive voice, because it's obvious that uh, and, and uh, corpor corporation of these ones are creating new telephone, dev new communication devices. However, it's kind uh, of if, obvious. If well, yeah, however, we're being very specific about the company because AT&T is not the only, you know, uh, company that can do this. We're talking about there are some other companies that are also in the same business. So we're being very specific about what company is doing this. So AT&T is developing new communication devices. It's not only focusing on, on phones, but some other new devices right there. So in this case, uh, uh, sorry to say it, okay, the active sentence is more appropriate because you're being specific on who is doing it, okay? You want to focus on who is doing the action, okay? The second one, uh, Debbie points out, is more general, okay? Now, if I had said something like, you know, phone companies are developing new communication devices and this is why I changed it, okay? Then th the answer will be valid, totally valid. Like, new communication devices are being developed. By whom? You know, phone companies. But in this case, we're being very specific about which company is developing those communication devices. That would be AT&T. So uh, in this case, the active voice is more appropriate, okay? And that's what I want you to take a look at here. It's better, okay, if, if the agent, the person or the thing doing the action is unknown or obvious from the context, it's better to use the, a passive form. However, if the person or thing doing the action needs to be emphasized, like in this case, AT&T, not a generic phone company, but AT&T in this case, it's better to use the active form. 
You can also use the passive form if you use by, okay? That's also possible. You can say new communication de devices are being developed by a T and T. If that's the case, yeah, you could totally use the passive voice, okay? If you use by. Now, let's take a look at this. The virus was sent to disrupt internet service at the college. Okay, now, what about this? This is passive voice. Why is it passive? Because the agent is unknown. In other words, who sent the virus? We don't know. Normally, hackers don't say like, yeah, I was responsible for the attack. No, nobody says that, okay? Hackers usually remain anonymous, okay? They don't know, they, nobody knows who they were. Okay, so you just know that somebody on some basement probably wrote some malicious code and sent it, and, and, and that was it. So the virus was sent to disrupt internet service at the college. Who wrote the virus and sent it? No idea, okay? Maybe the person will be caught someday, but for the time being, we don't know. So the, the agent is unknown. College degrees are being offered online, okay? So why do we use the passive voice? Because the agent is clear from the context. Now, who's the agent? Colleges, okay, universities, people in charge of running those institutions, they are doing that. So you don't need to, you don't need to mention it. So you just need to know that college degrees are being offered online by universities and colleges. Okay, so it is pretty clear. It's 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 obvious, right? And what about this one? Bill Gates started Microsoft, not Bill Clinton. Okay, now this is active voice. Why is it active? Because we're emphasizing on the agent. Bill Gates is the person who started Microsoft, not Bill Clinton. Okay, the passive cannot be used with the present perfect continuous. You use the passive of the present perfect instead. So people have been downloading more music this year than ever before. Okay. More music has been downloaded this year than ever before. Even more music will have been downloaded by this time next year. So one thing to remember is that we cannot use present perfect continuous in the passive voice. I cannot even come up with a kind of example because it's the structure pretty much doesn't exist. So we're going to do an exercise here. We don't have much time, but I guess we can do a couple exercises. Um, Let's go for this one. For each pair of sentences, is it better to use the passive or the active form? Circle A or B, choose A or B. You cannot circle from there, but, well, you can if you use the function, but please don't do it. Uh, you have A or B. More US employers will probably block access to internet video sites or access to internet video sites will probably be blocked. In this case, it's definitely letter A, okay? If you say letter B, access to internet video sites will probably be blocked. People will panic and say like, huh? Well, so I won't be able to use YouTube anymore? Okay, no, no, relax. We're talking about US employers. In other words, you will not be able to do it at work, but you can do it at home, absolutely. So it's letter A, more US employers, that's the agent, will probably block access to internet video sites. This is an active sentence. The active sentence is definitely more appropriate. I'm going to give you two minutes for you to read number two, number three, and number four, and I want you to select the most appropriate sentence. Sometimes it's going to be active, sometimes it's going to be passive, okay? Two minutes, then we're gonna check answers. This is not in the platform, okay? So let's do it now.
José. For number two, the best option for me is letter B. Letter B. Okay, let's read them. Soon, inventors will invent devices to download movies in a in under a minute. More devices to download movies in under a minute will be invented soon. You we say don't need B. to emphasize inventors, but because inventors is kind of general, could be whoever. Mm -hmm. It sounds redundant, right? Yeah. Or, I mean, inventors will invent. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> devices to download movies in under a minute will be invented soon. That is correct. Now, who is going to invent them? Some inventor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Thank you, Jose. And also because we don't know who is going to invent them. We exactly. can emphasize some names, but we don't know the names. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's uh, some unknown inventor. Okay, good. Thank you very much. How about number three? Auto markers might be including uh, internet access in their product soon, or internet access might be included soon. Okay, how about this one right here? Okay, uh, sorry. Jose, thank you. Thank you very much, Jose. But I'm going to give the chance to Alejandro this time. <laughs> okay. Okay, but thank you very much. Okay, just to okay. Uh okay. So uh, automakers. Okay. I said automakers. I'm sorry, but automakers might be including internet access in the product soon, so internet access might be included soon. How about this one, Alejandro? Letter A teacher. Letter A, automakers. Okay, yes. might be included in internet access in the product soon. That is correct. Okay, if you just say internet access might be included soon, I mean, it, it, grammatically, it's it's a correct sentence, but it it leaves more questions than answers. Right there, you go like internet access might be included soon. In what? By whom? Okay, what are you talking about? So yeah, you go like automakers. In other words, companies that make cars. Okay, might be including internet access in their products soon. Okay, that's that's. That's that's much more clear. Okay, so uh, number four, Debbie Segura. Bloggers are creating For blogs me. on a wide range of topics, or blogs are being created on a wide range of topics. What do you think? It's really obvious that it's the letter B. Yeah, absolutely, it's letter B because I mean, a, a bloggers write blogs. Totally. Okay, so. Blogs are being created on a wide range of topics. That is correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah, totally. Okay. You don't you don't need to say bloggers are creating blogs because it sounds redundant. It is pretty obvious. Okay, so no. Similar to number two, say inventors will invent. No, I mean active voice is not necessary right there. The passive voice is much better. Okay. That's that's really, really good. Um, we're about to leave, but before that, I would like to uh, pass the attendance list one more time. There are a few people who haven't replied yet. So if you're here, please let me know. It is Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Are you here? It is Regina. It's here. It's okay. here teacher. Thank you very much. Welcome. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Vale. Present. Okay, thank you, Jose Arturo. Where is where is your fox avatar? Okay. Uh, Today I was a <laughs> listener. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Nadia Isolina Rodriguez. Yes, yes teacher. Hello. Okay. Ricardo Ernesto Quija Ramirez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. Janet Yanira Rodriguez Andres. Janet Yanira Rodriguez Andres. Okay, then. All right, everybody, remember, okay, um, complete the exercises, okay? You should, everything should be completed up to exercise 3.4. If you can, you know, continue, let's do it. I believe uh, you requested some help for listening to exercise 3.5. Uh, it's, it's the first thing we're going to do tomorrow. Okay, I promise. Okay, so we're going to solve this exercise first thing in 
I was going to say first thing in the morning, but no, it's not the morning. First thing in the evening tomorrow. So uh, thank you for your attention, everybody. Okay, and uh, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Take good care. That's a question. Do you have a question? We only, we only need to complete the session three for this week. Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I I I made a comment, uh, an observation, okay, to uh, the administrators because I saw that they have published that it was supposed to be like uh, the same confusion that we had at the beginning, right? Section one and two, first week, section, and so on. But I I pointed it out and I told them like, hey, listen, this is only four sections, and then they uh, deleted that and they have already posted the right information. I believe it's uh, somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Week one, section one. Week two, section two, and midterm. Week three, section three. Okay, just for this week, section three. Okay, thank All you right. so much. Hey, okay. Have a good night. Bye bye. Good night. Take good care. Bye guys. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Bye bye. Welcome. Bye bye. Good night. Good night.